have a conversation with Michelle Kasu. Michelle Kasu has been a friend, mentor, teacher to me for many, 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 I don't know, way too many years going into the decades. And I thought it would be so fun to have a conversation with Michelle because many people know Michelle through her work. I've seen it through the, the decades, how many people's lives have been touched by Michelle's work. And um, uh, the way I know Michelle, she loves the work so much, she puts the work in the foreground and she stands to the background because <laughs> she is a messenger of this work and wants this work out there. Her? True? Yeah, true, true. Okay. Okay. So Michelle Kazoo has been... My reason, my reason to live, yeah. <laughs> the reason to live, exactly. So I'm not exaggerating. So the, the, uh, Michelle has been exploring what she refers to as 100% creativity for 50 plus years. And her passion for this process, her passion for the understanding of creativity and the benefits that this brings to any human being's life has been her life's work. Um, I, I find it so fascinating that in her teachings, she exemplifies and demonstrates how this is a limitless exploration that continues to bring more benefits than I could describe, but benefits to a human being on all, all levels. So Michelle, would you share how this, um, I don't know how you say, how this all began for you and 56 okay. years ago, however many it was. I was just born. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, all, I saw right away something was to be done. <laughs> Well, it's, it really started, uh, uh, I guess, when I was like, when I was young, like, uh, you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I kept trying to be attracted to painting. And I could never find anybody to help me. Mm -hmm. was my father tried to, to tell me how to do a line, but, you know, it's just like, uh, so and then I moved to Paris when I was 14 and I, uh, and I got some different kind of classes, but it was always... Uh, study the old master, try to repeat them, try to understand what they do, so you do it. And, and it was like so burdensome. Yeah, I mean, it was so hard. And I, but I kept trying because I was so attracted. I got a, a case of paint. I got some uh, uh, canvas, and I was trying to do that. But it was always so much disappointment because it was not very interesting, you know, what I was doing. Mm. So I did that for a few years until... I, uh, I think I must have been 17 or maybe 17 year old and I decided to really go to a school uh, because by myself I didn't seem to get what I needed. So uh, I, uh, I st first I went to this regular traditional school. I, I forgot the name, it was called Atelier something. And uh, so I went there and I was waiting for to get there. Like it's like, 17 years of waiting and I come and I was so excited and then I go and uh, they give me a piece of white paper and they give me a plaster and I was supposed to re reproduce the plaster three hours they gave us to reproduce the plaster and they gave us a lot of tools I was surprised there was a uh, compass and uh, weight and you know all kind of tools mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I was like what what's that you know I didn't expect that so I, I did I did the best I could uh, and the teacher will come once in a while and correct he will go on my paper and correct something or add something you know and I was like you know it was very strange like like I was supposed to do it exactly that way so of course I didn't stay too long I just spent a few weeks probably no more than a month three weeks I don't know Mm -hmm. Then I went to another class, and uh, yes, there was a lot of little little art school like that in Paris. There was a big art uh, school, you know, but there was all this little school. And so I went to maybe three of them, and the same thing in a different way was the same thing. And I said, well, these teachers, they don't seem to be happy. Mm -hmm. No even sense of humor, you know, it was just about doing the thing right. And, uh, and I said, this is what... Uh, you know, that's, I have no interest, and I had to admit I had no interest. And I thought, 
well, this is uh, the dream of my life was wrong. It was, uh, I'm supposed to do something else. But inside of me, I keep searching. And I met by chance this uh, uh, psychologist that was going to do study on, I don't know what. But anyway, I went, it was for free. So I went there and I talked to her and I told her, you know, told her I had a dream and it was finished. And she told me, oh, why don't you try to go uh, and... Uh, and learn how to uh, help children paint. I say, okay, well, if I can do the address, I do the children, you know, that's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. So she gave me the address of this, what was called the free expression studio. And so I went there, I went there and uh, it was, it just happened in a couple of seconds. I just came in the room and the kids were already painting. There was maybe 14 kids painting, some five, five to 12 or 14, something like that. And uh, I, I just burst in tears. You know, I didn't have time to think. I felt that creative energy like, <laughs> like a bomb coming in my chest and I burst in tears. And I say, okay, are they going to kick me out? I, I don't have, you know, are they going to say something is wrong with me? Like I just come and I just start crying and stuff. And, and I was feeling very depressed, but I stayed and I watched them like for an hour. It was part of the program to watch them for an hour. And, uh, but I was not kicked out and it was so fantastic uh, because at the end I asked, can I come and paint with the children? Because they are free, they do what they want and I'm, I've been suffering so much and they're doing exactly what I wanted to do and I was accepted. You know, they took me. I was, it was great. So I started going painting with the children and I started first once a week, twice a week, three times a week and I ended up painting every day including weekends. So I will be there early in the morning, they will have a class in the morning, they will have a class in the afternoon, but I will stay there the whole time, you know. I was a staple, you know, I was like in the studio. And I got very, very uh, happy very fast because I started painting and I felt that my painting looked terrible. And I look at the kids, they say they paint better than me. I look at this five-year-old, they had all this lively color and stuff, and I was like, I, you know, I felt it was so, uh, it's so, 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 so tame what I was doing, you know, and, uh, and feeling a little bit miserable until that little girl came to me. She was really young. She must have been maybe six, you know, around six or five or six. And she told me, Michel, I love your painting. And I was like, what? You know, how could anybody think like that? Even a kid, you know? And, uh, and then, that's when it really happened. Because when she told me she loved my painting, I, I thought I could have had another kid come and tell me I hate your painting. Or another one say, oh, another, you know, I, I realized that anybody could have said anything. It didn't mean anything. Oh my gosh. So but it's not because she told me she loved him. It's she, 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 I saw her making a judgment and seeing that the, the judgment is irrelevant. So that's when I had my big breakthrough. Because I say any, anybody could say anything, so it doesn't matter. It does not count what people think is irrelevant. Whatever they think, you know. So, so that was a, a huge, huge breakthrough. And then I became very happy, and I became very free. I say if I don't have to worry anymore what people think, mm -hmm. how people uh, or look at my painting, if they think it's harmonious or not, you know, I'm free. I don't have to show my painting ever, ever to anybody. I, uh, I finally had find a moment of freedom of the, you know, being like, I was about 17 or 18, my, a moment of freedom. And I say, I can keep that freedom my whole life. And immediately I thought, well, if I keep doing that my whole life, what will happen to me? You know, that was the question I asked myself, but I was curious and I knew I was not going to stop from that time on. So I painted, painted, painted three and a half years with the children nonstop. The children knew me. I was part of the world. You know, I was always there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was the only adult until at the end, there was another ad adult that came, but I was the only adult painting. And after a three and a half year, I had to move to Canada because I was married and my uh, husband had to go teach to the University of Ottawa. So I was very miserable to have to move, to leave the studio. It was very, very hard for me. And uh, so. Uh, I, I was on my own. Then I arrived to Canada, I was on my own. 
So, uh, but before I went to Canada during these three and a half years, I had some people come to my house and paint. I was trying. I wanted to be a teacher because I said the most important thing is to pass that along. I say I could have died and never find out. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want, I wanted the world to know it. you could paint like that. Because if I didn't, I think I would have been so miserable, I would have died. <laughs> so. But when uh, you say that, when you say that, you wanted people to know they could paint like that. Yes. Tell me wh what you're describing. I'm describing you can paint without worrying about thinking. What mm -hmm. you think and what other people think. You can just do what feels naturally, what feels true. Because as, as I started painting, I was very surprised. Very soon, I started painting uh, things from my uh, childhood, my family. I had problem with my father. It came out. You know, I had a moment of depression. It came out on the painting. I mean, everything was coming out. And I, Without and it was, a plan, right? Without a plan. Without a plan. I never thought about it. I, I would paint and uh, I couldn't believe it. It was there. You know, sometimes I will go in this strange space. I didn't even realize I was putting things that were very significant, but I, I didn't even know I was doing it. And because I was not caring about the result, I knew nobody will ever look at it. Nobody... I would never let anybody talk about it. Nobody could see my painting. And I tell my family, nobody can see that. So this, is, this is totally private, totally intimate. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I wanted people to know that they could discover that. You see? Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I felt I was very lucky that I had not studied more and learned more because I didn't have to forget it. And I realized if I had, if I had learned anything, I had to forget. So I wanted people to know, you know, immediately I realized it was self-expression. Mm -hmm. You know, because my, my problems were coming out, my things from my childhood, and it was nonstop. And, and I, <laughs> I realized that I was behind. How when, you when I started painting, I realized I was behind in my self-expression. I, I, I realized I should have done that since I was a little child. And now I had this big burden to carry. And I was starting to empty it. But I realized I was behind because I had so much to empty. That's a feeling that, that I had, you know. So I wanted people to know that they didn't have to keep their feeling inside. And they could express them and they could... I feel at ease with life and I became so happy. I wanted everybody to be happy, you know. When I was, even when I was painting really hard things from my childhood, you know, I was very happy. I realized it didn't matter what I painted uh, because the fact that it was moving and expressing itself would make me happy. It didn't matter if I was painting very, very difficult moment or what, it just didn't matter. Uh, I, once at the beginning, I painted myself with a rope on my neck and the and, uh, and big stone to kill myself. And I was so happy. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I, I was so happy that it came out of me. Oh, it was really strange that it didn't matter what I painted. And it stayed like that until the end. Sometimes people tell me, you know, how do you feel? I mean, sometimes I love my painting. Sometimes I kiss my painting, you know. But I, I just, no matter what it is, it doesn't matter. It, if it's like a scribble, if the scribble feels it move my expression, it doesn't matter. If it's like a uh, strange painting, you know, it, does, it doesn't matter. And I wanted people to know. And, and I could see there was a lot of, you know, a lot of people from the Beaux-Arts, they call it at Paris, you know, art school for the, for, for the arts. And they were so miserable. I always see them fighting and checking and repairing and fixing and searching for idea and i say well we don't need to all of that to be happy uh, in what we do so that's the way it started and then of course after i started uh, i started teaching children because i couldn't get any adults to stay they, mm. they won't stay they will they are so strange these people you know they, they had this magnificent opportunity and they would pass it uh, it was not out of my enthusiasm, but uh, so. But anyway, I will have a couple there. But I, I had some children. I had some uh, disabled children. You know, I took some, and then I went to Canada. You know, really quickly. And when I arrived in Canada, I said, you know, this is the time now for me to uh, to have real classes. So I went to the university, 
And they are, the guy here, I mean, immediately the director, you know, I was so enthusiastic and I had some recommendation from a, a great painter in Paris. And so uh, I started giving my classes. So, but we know what happened when I gave these classes. My students loved it. Oh, they were so relieved because they had all these traditional classes and I arrived here and I talk about freedom and spontaneity. And they were so excited. And I remember I had a couple of Quebecois students. They were like the most, they wouldn't stop, you know, uh, painting when they go home and all the time. But since they started liking the class more and more, that brings problem. You know, there is problem when people don't like what you do, when, when, but then we really like it. It brings problem because everything, everybody feels challenged. And all the teachers were challenged because the students were starting to question the critiquing, the criticizing question. Uh, oh, the critique process. The critique. So traditionally. Process, the themes they were given. And so they were really, uh, they were really liking to do more with me. And when they asked to do more with me, you know, we had a big meeting with the faculty and they kicked me out, you know. I wrote that in my book, you know. It's just like, they kicked me out without giving me a day to say goodbye to my husband. I mean, it was just a terrible thing, but I knew I was going to keep teaching my whole life. I was just worrying for the student. Uh, so after that, I went to another part of the university and I kept teaching. Mm -hmm. and I kept teaching for a few years and I went to Montreal and I was teaching children and adults for a few years until I came to California. And uh, that's the way it started. And, and we, then, of course, please. you know, what I was thinking is that for, for people to be free, you should never tell them anything. You should never influence anybody. That's the way I started, you know. Don't influence them, don't criticize. And then I realized I realized very quickly, like in, in the university when I was teaching, that uh, that the students, they didn't have enough uh, eat in their intuition, so they will get bored after a while. They didn't have enough what in their intuition? Heat. <laughs> fire. Oh. <laughs> they didn't have enough fire. Okay, it, okay. So they, go, they will go back to the traditional and they and they mix everything. And after a while, I noticed that I was losing some students. After the great excitement of the beginning, I was losing them. And uh, so that's when I started really thinking of how is this process is working. Mm -hmm. and, uh, when I, uh, and that's when I really, t uh, you really observe, you know, what they were doing. And I, uh, and I started, you know, uh, realizing what they needed, how to get them to stay in their intuition, how to let them have the intuition get bigger. And I have been doing that until now. You know, I said still I'm doing, I'm looking for ways to get the intuition moving without having the aesthetic sense being in the way. So I, so I developed that in Canada. I started developing in Canada. Of course, when I came here, I keep doing that. And I still doing it. I still have these dreams that I can do it. And that's it. <laughs> and so your life's work has really been around um, helping people have a bigger relationship with their intuition as it relates to just living freely. That's it. You know, what I noticed immediately when I started painting is that when I was painting my painting and letting myself express myself, my life was changing. I had a different relationship with people, with things, with everything. I realized that day that I was not a real person. I had borrowed all my ideas from books, from people, and from teachers. I was not a real person. I just realized that. And I said, oh, my God, I am a second end person. I have nothing authentic inside of me. But when I paint, I'm becoming authentic because I was authentic in painting. So, so it tell me, oh, it's not just about painting, it's about life. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that happen. It's not like a hobby. You know, you know, you do a hobby and it's like you, you touch your life. You, you, you know, you let it just, 
you, 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 you know it touched your life and you know it changed things and you want these things to change because you realize you were paralyzed before, you know, in many ways. And I was repeating and I, uh, the older sister and I was repeating everything. I was not myself. So I, I become a different, very different person. Uh, actually, in, in everything, you know, everything I talk about, everything I dressed, everything I ate, I mean, everything changed, it become mine. Like all, all that happened very quickly at the beginning in France, you know, when I started. Okay. Well, I think that, that it's so fascinating how many, many people are drawn to creative endeavors, you know, with paintbrushes and things like that. I mean, people are drawn to these creative endeavors and um, then they find that the judgment stops them from kind of what drew them to that in the first place. Yes. And so as human beings, do you think we just fall to, we're just too influenced by, by what? I mean. Yeah. So, so people are attracted. Sometimes they don't know it, but are attracted, attracted to creativity because they feel something is missing in their life. Almost everybody or something is not going quite right. They are happy 80%, but there is always, there is always something that's missing. Mm. And that's what people think about when something is missing. They think of art, you know, of a hobby, and and they, they are attracted to colors and they try. But what you're telling me is that they they go there, but they start judging why? Because they judge every everything in life. In life, you go out, people judge your hair, they judge your clothes, they judge how you talk, they they judge who you. Are. I mean, this is the way collectively we are brought up we are brought up in judgment for the judgment comparison evaluation being better than is anybody else being special so they are going to bring it to the painting mm -hmm. so when they paint immediately this criticizing mind is going to come and say oh the color is not good the subject is not good you're not you know you're not doing well everybody you know and there are the artists, you never be an artist. And the mind goes and paralyzes the people until they stop. Mm -hmm. They get blocked. They cre get creative block for years. For you know, I have people coming. They tell me they have been blocked for many years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just like the way we are brought up. It's a pattern of thinking, judgment, and comparison. And so our job as teacher, in quote. <laughs> is to to help them to stop that judgment that criticism that uh, that uh, wanting to be better wanting to do something special and be proud of you know we and it's very very difficult job it's the most i tell people it's the most difficult thing we can ask anybody is to stop judging there is nothing more difficult than we can ask because it's it comes too fast and, and you get one judgment, you get another one, and you get another one. And so we, we are put in front, but for the people to stop judging, they have to understand how we live. So collectively, they have to understand how it works. Mm -hmm. And just realize, and then they have to understand about intuition. All oh, the whole world talks about intuition, you know? They talk about imagination a lot, but they talk about intuition, and everybody thinks they know intuition, they know what it is. Well, I have 77 years of I look for what it is, and I still have to discover about it. It's, it's an immense, enormous, and deep thing. Intuition is something very, very special. And very, very sensitive and very powerful. And, and many people, they say, oh, sure, it exists. But to feel it inside of you running like electric current, like inside of you, to feel it like moving and, and doing, it's, it's a different thing, and going as far as it can, like a river going all the way to the ocean. Well, you know, this is our job now, is to remind people that they have intuition inside of them and that everybody has it. There's not some people that don't and some people that don't have it, but everybody has intuition. And, and then to discover what it is and to be interested in it rather than in a nice painting, to be interested in the intuition. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then we, we have them experiment with him and 
take a chance, leer a little bit leer, and it takes practice. You know, it's like a meditation, it takes practice. You get into the intuition a little bit and a little bit more, a little bit more until it explodes one day. And one day you reach that point that I talk about, which is the point of no return. You have touched so hard, harsh, so hard into the, the movement of intuition that you cannot forget about it. It's, even if you forget it, it will come back. I mean, it's going to be there in your life with you forever. So we are encouraged to and to go to that point where the intuition, they have understood what it is and how it works and, and how it moves in their life. And then they're going to start noticing that things change in their life. Because it's about what change in the painting, change in your life. Hmm? So in, in the way that I'm hearing you say this, I know this happened naturally inside of you, but so people can kind of understand. So the, what you've always spoken about with intuition about its benevolent in nature and how you talked about how we were so um, uh, influenced that we never really lived fully expressed as human beings. Not a problem. It just seems to be, be the way that we are all brought up in the world, that we are kind of burdened by influences. Intuition is so benevolent that it wants the opportunity to free you of those influences so you That's can really expect, experience the truth of who and what you are. Yes. That's right. And um, Which feels so good. Like you said, that's the part that feels so good is that you're living free of all those influences, which are those judgments that you were just pointing to. Like you want to become yourself because what, you're going to become the neighbor, you're going to become uh, the things, uh, you know, like you want to be yourself. Everybody says that. They want to become their self as much as possible. And their self is unique. Nobody is the same. And, and painting allows you to discover your uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And, and and when you discover it is so delicious, you know. Of course, you might get some people there and there that just are going to judge your, you. But you you know you know that the problem is theirs. It's not yours. If they judge you, I tell people it's their problem. It's not your problem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So and and then you enjoy being yourself, and you you realize that you can go a very long way in being yourself, because you have feeling, you have guts, you. Have, you have unconscious that is full of things that have happened, but you have also the, the soul, you have the, the spirit, you have, you have dimension. It's not possible even to realize all the dimension there has because you reach a dimension, you reach another one, and you reach, it keeps going. I tell people you can paint for 100 years, 200 years, there will be still to paint. Because as you move, you enter places that were, that were hidden before. And it's just going to keep going and going. So after you, you, you start being yourself, you start having the courage to enter this, this unknown dimension. And it's not what's in the paper or on television. It's unknown dimension. You discover for yourself what is really going on for yourself. I mean, in your own truth, what is your own truth? Um, and even and, that, yes? unknown dimension is... I love the way you talk about how this unknown dimension is limitless. It is limitless. I, have, I was very surprised because when I started painting the first years, I thought I was just going to empty my feeling, empty my unconscious. So I painted, I painted hundreds and thousands of paintings, and one day I was like, I have painted everything. <laughs> I woke up in the morning and I say, I have painted everything. What am I going to do with my life now? I'm still in my 20, you know. What is it? And, uh, and then uh, I spent three or four days like saying, my God, my God, what am I going to do? Everything has been painted. And then I discovered a new dimension. I, go back, I went back to painting and I started doing things more unknown, more mysterious, uh, more, uh, more diff different. And I say, oh my God, it was like a gateway that opened up. And, and I entered places that were very mysterious and unknown to me. And then I went, I have not stopped then because I have gone through that and through that and through that. And it does not stop. But I, it goes on. It goes on. If you want to discover, it goes on. It depends what you want. 
there are some people that only need self-expression. If that's what they need and that's all they want to do, that's fine. But if you want to carry the painting to discover the other dimension, uh, since it's a great mystery to be a human being, mm. Mm. To be the first time, space, you know, we, we live in a great mystery. So if you want to go on, you just go on. But it does not mean that you're not going to express things that are going on in your life or feelings or the unconscious, maybe things are left there or things have been coming later. But uh, in any case, it's benevolent. But how can it not be benevolent to empty something that inside of you and that has been there for years, bothering you, you know, uh, things you felt, you know, some people have had traumatic experience, there was a war, there was a lot of things, and of course it's benevolent, because intuition wants the channel, the river of who you are, it wants it clean, because it passes through, through it, and as passing through it, it, it tears off all the residue, all the deposits. Hmm? That's what it does. And as it does that, it's, it's obviously healing and it's obviously enlightening because it's going, it's cleaning up your, your eyes, <laughs> your inner eyes, your inner heart. It's, it's, so it's, it's on your side. So it's clean, if you're saying this, like it, it's clearing, cleaning out all that's not you, all the add-on stuff. Every, every add-ons, every uh, wounds, every stuff that you have kept a long time inside of you. Mm -hmm. Because so much happens when you are a child, you know, even things happen. We get hurt with a lot of things. And everything that stays, that is not fixed, that is unfinished, is going to want to be finished. Mm. Mm. If you have hurt and you have not digested it and you did push it away, it's going to want to come back. At a certain point, I don't know when, it could be the first year, it could be the second year, depending what, where it is, you know. It's going to happen, but it's going to be benevolent for that. I often think that I would have died if I didn't have the painting because, I mean, I had a difficult childhood in the war and everything. Uh, lots of things happened for me that were very difficult, and I always thought that I won't have make it, you know, if I didn't have that, that tool to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think for everyone, it's going to, to do what it needs to do. It depends on what people need. Mm -hmm. But it's going to go not to what you want. That's what I tell you. We tell people at the beginning. We tell you, painting is not going to give you what you want. It's going to give you what you need. You might want a nice sunset with beautiful colors and, and the things that people are going to admire. And inside of you, you might, <laughs> you might want to paint this, <laughs> this thing, you know. And that will make you happy. Yeah, and the nice sunset that you're going to make and, and work on it for a long time, you know, it's a piece of paper. <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to give you too much. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when you talk about this and you, you have shared what you've seen and experienced with thousands, if not tens of thousands of people. And one of the very common questions is, is like, but I'm not creative. Have you ever, and all of these tens of thousands of people ever crossed someone that did not, have the ability to be naturally creative? No, I never find anybody that they cannot be creative. That some, uh, some people are very afraid. Mm. There is fear of being creative and being, some people have fear of being intuitive and creative, but I never met somebody that couldn't do it. I have seen many voices. It's like, let's say every, nobody paints the same. Like some people sometimes tell me, oh, some painting look like the other. I say, no. In your eyes, in my eyes, I see, it's like the voice, you know, I can say, okay, it's a French voice, but it's a different one, you know. But so, some people say, it's, all the voices are different, all the paintings are different, but nobody cannot not paint. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, and I, it's, it's, like they, do, they will do things differently because they resent it differently, because it, it follows differently. So you cannot have a, you cannot have a method or a technique, I say, painting number one, number two, number three, 10, 20, the way they should paint. We don't know. We don't know how people should paint, and people paint many different ways. And sometimes something you don't even realize or self-expressive is it is very self-expressive. So as teacher, we have to be very, very careful because we, before we think of anything on, on somebody's painting, yeah. 
But some, pe some people say they are not creative, but often these are people that are like it the most after a while. We had noticed, it was interesting, that in the classes, once in a while there is a person that comes and that's really our time painting. And they can't stand you talking to them and freeing them. They don't want to hear about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And they were often the people that will stay the longest, the, the longer years in it than the people that start at the beginning and everything goes well. You know, so even when it's difficult, it means inside of it resist, something resists inside. The psyche, something is resisting. But when you start letting go, it's really hard to let it go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I think it's so interesting is like, because children are so free and we, we were all, we all came into this world as children and very free and they, they paint everything, strong images, simple images, they have nothing on it. And then do you, then when you said people get very afraid about expressing. Yeah, because they are told, even the children, I say now are three and a half, four, they are not free anymore because they have heard too many things, the parents, the teacher have said, you paint that, that color, that dimension, that, you know. Or what do you mean when you say something? Children are terribly uh, handicapped when you tell them, why do you paint that? You know, oh, it, it, it comes naturally. It's a movement of life. You know, they paint whatever they paint. And when the, the grown-up come and say, why did you paint your brother like that? Or why did you paint... The dog, you know, they, they like, they give you, they always give you reason because they, you know, they have learned. But inside of them, something cringe, something closes. They don't, they lose their freedom. So that's why we have learned to teach children with that, uh, letting them really be free to do what they do and yet encouraging them to go as deep as possible. That's what we do with the adults also. We, we always encourage them to go as deep as possible. And I personally, I like when they start moving to new dimension, you know, I just love it. That's when, that's my love, you know? So I, uh, you know, when they do that, I, I encourage that a lot because I feel it brings expansion because the mind is so narrow at times, you know, and just saying like my problem, my family, you know, that's all I have. And then it just, it expands the way we look at the world, the way we feel things in, in the world. So as you go and then and, and that you expand the dimension, you keep moving to new dimension, you got your perception change mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a way you cannot expect, you know? Yeah. Well, I think so, what you described is so, what is so articulate and clear is that the mind paints a very narrow view of you and life. Yes. And then this painting process is, um, it got so much more for you than to live in that narrow hallway that the mind creates and that we live in our can live in in our entire life if we don't express beyond that hallway. Yeah, we can see that our whole life there. You know, you see people and growing gold in that space is very difficult. I have seen that recently. It's very difficult. Uh, so it's very good to have uh, to have uh, to practice that keep cracking open the boundary of who you think you are. You know, at the beginning, like they get a little bigger and bigger, and they crack. You know, and and so how, how fast you know you want to have them crack, but it's really good to crack them. If not, you're going to end up like what? Mm -hmm. You know, with the whole body and the same little narrow mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't think people realize that's on offer. I mean, through through creativity, which is such a bigger topic than making a pretty picture, you know, perfect technique of some sort, which is all great and wonderful, but I don't think people know, they can't, I heard you say people can't know what they don't know, and that in sharing the message that there is so, the enthusiasm and purity that you hear that life can be so much bigger than that hallway the mind has created. But people just, they don't know that that's on offer. That's what I think your work is so unique. Yeah, they don't know it's offered and I could have missed it myself. I, I was very lucky to, to come over it. And yeah, it's, it's nice to know that there is a tool. Mm. A tool to go as far as you want. You don't have to go further than you want. You you cannot go. You can. You don't have to go faster than you want. But there is a tool here. You know, it's like you have a tool and you learn to use it. 
Well, I love the distinction between there's a tool here, but there's not a technique. There is a tool, but there is no technique, yeah. There is no special way to use it. We have put together a, a series of principles, you know, but they are not technique. We don't have a technique. We tell people at the end, it's, really, it's, what, it's always what you want. You are the boss of your painting. But we recommend certain things because intuition is nature. It's part of nature. The intuition that grows the trees, that makes the, the days and everything. There is a, this movement of intuition in the whole universe. And it's through you also. So, so our principle are to uh, say, okay, we have this, it's natural. We have natural principle. It's like sometimes people ask me, can I put my, my painting the other way? I started it this way now. I say, well, if you have a plant in your house, are you going to put the other way? You know, it's like natural, simple, austere. You know, it is just three. And this is the way you're going to go the further when you keep things uh, natural in, in the natural way. It's like destroying the painting. Like in many places, when they don't like what they have done, they tear it up, they throw it out, start another one and another one. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, you know, nature is going to go a, a, a little weed or a little plant. And if the rose is, if the, the flower is not perfect, it does not smash it. I mean, I don't know, a gardener is something different. But mm -hmm. it's, nature keeps growing the best it can always. And we have this principle for, uh, for painting. Mm -hmm. The principle of nature, and we could write them all down, you know, uh, the respect. And... There, one thing in that process is the incredible respect you have for what you do. The honesty and the respect. Like, you're not going to paint something and say, this is ugly, this should be art. It's too ugly, you know? Well, if it gave it to me, it knows what it's doing. It, it has something. I just have to wait, you know? I, I tell people, don't eat the cake because before it's cooked. You know, you cannot say what test it's going Finish your painting and see what it does to you, you know. But there is, there is not, a, you don't have to choose between this or between that. Oh, that's the other thing. In this process, you don't choose anything. And that's what a lot of people resist. They want to be able to choose between red and blue and green and yellow. And I want to choose between painting a tree and a bird and the, and the sky and, and, uh, and their little sister. I mean, they want to be able to choose that. There is no choice. When you're really in the process, there is no choice. It's like, the, you know, it's like nature. It will do what it will do depending on... The river will, will flow only because of the shape of the bed. It will not flow because you want it this way or you want it this way or because it decides to do that. It just will flow the only natural way. Mm -hmm. well, one thing that That's you... A thing. Sorry? No, I'm thinking one of the things that you've explained many times that has been so helpful is that like nature it it's it's gosh inarguably true and present in front of us but it can be invisible to us and that with creativity it's much like that's where it runs in cycles just like nature you know a seed sprouts a seed grows a seed bears fruit and this the cyclical nature of of nature is exactly the cyclical nature of creativity that is again yes. never ending but you allow it to finish the cycle everything work with cycle and everything pulse we think we are immobile we think like we're going to stay like you know like things are fixed but in fact everything is in movement all the time like the cells in the body in the air everything you know in the clothes everything moves and in a way when you get painting you realize when you get into your intuition that everything is in movement and and you are you make peace with that i mean you you you, you like it you it, it's like it changed the way you see mm -hmm. so you uh, you paint you know the river is running and you know you cannot uh, you cannot control it so you have no choice mm -hmm. you just have the choice to follow the river and to stop on the side and and pitch your tent and spend 20 years there, <laughs> all the time you want, or you see, follow the river. Yeah, and it's going to keep moving because it, it always moves, it, it, it's in constant, constant movement. What, what I, I said at the beginning, I will tell people, you know, they tell me, how did it change your life? I say, mostly, 
my life has become fluid. In the past, I thought I was like, now I have, I'm 60, now I'm 20, now I have this, now I do that. It's like it's fluid. It's the sense of it. That there is a fluidity to life instead of, uh, you know, like stopping, stopping, stopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that fluidity is, is delicious. You know, when people let themselves feel it, they, they just, they become happy. Because that's where the aliveness is, is what you've shared many times. And that fluidity is where the aliveness of life is, not in parking on the side and controlling or watching. It's in the movement okay. of it. It's in the movement. Can you imagine if you prepare your painting a week in advance, you think about it, oh, I'm going to paint that tree, I'm going to put this color in it. Do you come, it's dead. You see, we have a lot of paintings these days that people do. They are dead because they come, everything has been thought, everything has been, nothing has come because it moves. That's why when we finish the painting, I, I, I tell people, try five brushes for no reason, five colors, and let the brush jump out of your hand and do something. So, it, so you're not doing anything. It's the brush that does it, you know, like complete intuition at the end to make sure. I mean, mm -hmm. that, uh, yeah, it, it knows what to do and it's perfect. What it does is perfect, even when you hate it <laughs> and you think it's not beautiful. But it changes. It goes in cycle. You have the cycle like the wave, and it, it goes, it builds in, it builds in, and you have a... There is practically a sense of, almost of, for me, in my process, that time of sense of explosion. And then it will go down, and it will be like, uh, like, uh, like the winter again, and, and rebuilding, so you have like a cycle. And within the big cycle, you have the small cycle. Mm -hmm. But all this, uh, that has to do with nature and with the benevolence of nature and with what's needed. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, you know, it, it's almost hard to compare traditional painting, though it's changing now, traditional painting and free expression painting, it's, it's difficult mm -hmm. to compare them because they are completely different things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people, okay, you, you're going to, to be free, just be free. But they don't realize what it means to be free. Most of the time being free is being free five percent and ninety five percent is too con controlling everything. So our work is to 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 really let people realize what freedom is, how, how deep it goes. Mm -hmm. Because I will say, Oh, I'm free so I can throw away my painting anytime I don't like it, like every five minutes. Sometimes we have people they want to change painting every five minutes because they don't like the start, you know? So they don't realize it runs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being free is not putting your painting in the garbage when you, when you don't like it. Being free, facing what you have to face. <laughs> it's kind of facing what is here. I was like, right? that, that is a fresh definition of uh, freedom because we think I want to be free. Being free is allowing me to do everything my mind wants me to do. That's right. And that's not what... Mind, he wants cookie, wants ice cream. I don't know what it wants. You see your eyes, he wants cookies, you know. But when you don't have a choice, then you, you do what your whole being, what your intuition wants. And that's a real feeling of yourself, the real fulfillment. Yeah. Mm. So there is a lot, but it, it's interesting. It takes a long time for people to, to really realize, you know, the power and the potential of that freedom, of that, that tool, that possibility, yeah. First, it's just like doing a nice painting you like, you know. Well, I think even when you say that, the many layers of creativity, there's as many layers of uh, freedom, you know, because every time you think you couldn't be more free, it drops you in a freer space, and then it drops you in a freer space. So, it's So you let go. The, the, the so-called free and beautiful painting. But then, what are you going to get and, instead? You're going to get something you just love. You, you let go of the liking and the choosing for the love of what you do. Because when something is really authentic coming out of you, it just, uh, you cannot help loving it. Mm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like, what is... One thing that you 
if you would want people to know that's absolutely true about creativity. Well, creativity is born from intuition. That I know is absolutely true. It does not come from imagination where you try to imagine all kinds of different things and pick up the best one. It's mm -hmm. coming from intuition. The other thing is everybody has intuition. And the third one is, unfortunately, in this world, we have to learn to, we have to unlearn how to use intuition because we have been using it in the wrong ways. We have to come back to the authentic and natural way to use it. And then everything is given to everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely true. And intuition, if you listen to the principle, it's always going to lead you to what you need. Do you know how difficult it is to get to what you need? People go to a therapist, people do all kinds of things, drugs, all sorts to, to find themselves and find what they need, but that leads you to what you need if you let it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that was even going to be my last question. Like, um, what would you really want people to understand about creativity? What do I like them to understand? That they don't have to look for... Yeah. Really want, what you'd really want people to understand about creativity, because your whole life's work has been around exploring creativity, sharing what you've seen, and you share it so clearly and succinctly. You take that, which is incredibly mysterious, and put it on yeah. terms. For me, what, what I... For me, creativity is a ladder. A ladder, okay. Like a climbing ladder? Yeah. Okay. It's a ladder. It just keeps making you move where you need to go. Uh, it, but I don't know where it stops. It, mm -hmm. it's, all, it's complete wherever it is, and at the same time, there is a potential. The thing is that it's complete wherever it is. You paint a little dog or something, and you put your heart in it, it's complete. And yet you paint this, this other thing, it's, it's also complete, but it's a ladder in the same time. It's a ladder because you, because there is so much untruth. In, uh, so it's back to that kind of paradoxical nature about where you are is absolutely everything, but there's always, yeah. There's no need to find more, but there's always an invitation to explore more. Yeah, to explore more. So you can go vertical, you can go horizontal, you can explore too. Oh. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so I, I think this is a great time to hit a pause and to say thank you for your time and thank you for sharing so much of what you've lived and gives other people the opportunity to... to experience you and see you and hear you in, in your own voice, I think, is which is invaluable. So. Well, thank you. I don't know. I, I babble, but I, I see what I want. <laughs> I think it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> so at the end of this video, I'm going to, well, I'll have Michelle's website up so you can refer to her huge library of offerings of books, of CDs, of videos, of downloaded videos. And, um, her life's work is on her website, which is michellecasu.com. And that will be listed at the end of the video. You'll see where the link is where you can see it. So thank you, Michelle.